Fang Zhu Ming, yes. founder, chief executive, MD, EP Plus Group, pharmaceutical marketing business. You're very established in the market. Uh, let's talk about where it all started, right? Um, where did you come from and tell me about yourself. Uh, I was born in uh, Seremban into an uh, average uh, family of uh, five boys uh, inculcated with uh, good uh, uh, moral and family values. Uh, my dad was a teacher uh, in the school and uh, at a certain point in, in, of the time, uh, he was the headmaster of the school. So my mom was a uh, homemaker. So educated in uh, Kuala Pila because my dad was transferred to Kuala Pila from uh, Seremba. Grew up in a very small town, Kuala Pila. Uh, as you know, uh, in a small town, there's not much uh, distraction. Right. Uh, most of the time, I will be spending my time involved in sports, right? Uh, in uh, individual or even a team sports. Uh. So I'm quite good with uh, my uh, badminton, tennis, you know, all the racket games, and also team sports as well. You know, I played uh, volleyball, uh, basketball. I think sports uh, shape who I am today, shaping my mindset uh, to to be a risk taker. Uh, you know, the never say die uh, attitude, and also want to be different. Yeah, that's uh, how I grew up in the uh, small town in uh, Kuala Pila. And um, studies-wise, uh, yeah, I did well in my studies. Uh, unfortunately, it's not good enough to uh, get myself uh, uh, admitted to the medical school, which is my first choice. Uh, I have to opt for my second choice, which is uh, pharmaceutical uh, sciences. And also the options of uh, studying uh, overseas is not an option uh, because uh, coming uh, from a family of five boys and my dad was uh, teaching. So there was some uh, financial constraint and, uh, and also I think to reserve the uh, resources. I'm the eldest in the family. So to reserve uh, some resources for my other uh, uh, brothers. Yeah, yeah that's, that's me. Yeah, opted for uh, to pursue my uh, uh, degree in uh, pharmaceutical sciences in uh, USM uh, Penang. But something interesting happened in uh, Penang. Uh, in the third year of my studies, uh, I've uh, basically shaped, already planned out my career path and also decided to have something on my own because uh, I think at a young age, uh, I get to see the difference between the haves and the have-nots and that really gave me the drive to want to do well. So after shaping the career path and uh, also the, uh, the career vision, I started business. Uh, after working for about, uh, after graduating, I worked for about uh, six years and I started my own uh, business in uh, 1997. That's how it started. Where did the hunger come from? The hunger come from, uh, as I shared uh, earlier on, uh, at a very young age, I get to see, uh, you know, the haves and the have not, right? And uh, I want to, uh, I can't pursue my, uh, de the desired uh, course, which is a medicine, uh, but due to a uh, short of uh, fun, and uh, I couldn't get it. So that really gave me the uh, drive and the uh, impetus to uh, be successful. So how did the business start? So uh, as I was working uh, for six years uh, for a French uh, pharmaceutical company, and uh, after working for six years, I left the French company and joined a Taiwanese company. With the French company, I get to uh, learn about um, pharmaceutical sales and marketing. And uh, after leaving the French company, I joined the Taiwanese company. I got to learn about uh, how to start a pharmaceutical uh, business. And after six years of uh, working, and uh, when the opportunity knocks on the door, and uh, I seized the opportunity, I took the plunge. I took the risk. And that's how it uh, started. Talk about those days. How did you take the plunge? What do you mean by take the plunge? Taking the plunge meaning, uh, you know, um, instead of uh, still uh, uh, working as an employee, uh, I took the plunge and uh, decided to resign from the uh, comfortable job and uh, take up the challenge to start my own company with about uh, 200 over uh, 1,000 ringgit, you know, after uh, selling some uh, apartment and uh, some saving from my wife as well. So that's how it started, yeah. Um, how many years ago was that? That was uh, 25 years ago, in uh, 1997, uh, before the uh, Asian financial uh, crisis. So how did you survive that? That must have been quite stressful, right? Yes, um, uh, actually the sales was good though, in uh, 1997, 1998, um, the sales was good. The only challenge was uh, this, uh, is the devaluation of the, the ringgit and uh, also the uh, capital control. So the sales was good, the ringgit was uh, weakened and I still remember those days uh, I have to pay uh, one US dollars with uh, almost 4.8 ringgit. Because we were just starting, 
1997, before the uh, a few months before the financial crisis, and the setup was still small and the gearing was still uh, uh, low in that sense, and I managed to uh, work with the local uh, distributor to arrange the the cash flow and all that. I managed to uh, survive uh, for during the initial phase. So tell about the business now. You've got three different different lines: aesthetics, fertility, yes. and one more. Yes. So we have uh, three uh, business unit: uh, the pharmaceutical business unit, fertility sciences uh, business unit, and also a medical aesthetic uh, business unit. So pharmaceutical business unit is basically we are offering a range of uh, pharmaceutical products, uh, mainly from Europe, uh, helping uh, doctors uh, to meet uh, unmet uh, medical needs. Right. So in this uh, pharmaceutical business unit, uh, we have a product in a few therapeutic area. Uh, neurology. Uh, so in the field of uh, neurology, we have product used in the management of uh, stroke, subacute stroke and also the post-stroke. We also are uh, quite strong in the field of uh, gastroenterology. We have a range of products uh, in the field of uh, gastroenterology for some common GI problem and uh, also we are the market leader when it comes to colonic uh, cleansing to cleanse the colon before patients uh, go for uh, screening of the colon for cancer or before a surgeon uh, uh, start to operate on the patient, they need to cleanse the colon. So we are the, the, the market leader. So that is in the field of uh, gastroenterology. Uh, and also we have a product in, uh, for the treatment of uh, irritable uh, bowel syndrome. Yeah, so other than uh, the neurology and uh, gastroenterology, we have product uh, for uh, diabetes, the complication of diabetes, respiratory, and also uh, women's health. So that is the pharmaceutical division. And our second division is uh, dealing with fertility sciences or the assisted uh, reproductive uh, technology. Uh, basically, this division is helping, we offer products and uh, devices and also some uh, uh, equipment to help uh, fertility doctors and the embryologists uh, helping uh, infertile couples uh, to fulfill their dreams of uh, parenthood. Do you find that um, fertility is on the decline? Yes. Why is that? I think there are many reasons uh, as the you know, uh, husband and wife uh, when they start to work and uh, the stress level is uh, getting higher and higher and uh, also I think people are getting married at a, a later age as well. So these are some of the contributing factors contribute to the uh, increase in the uh, fertility uh, cases. So there's also health issues where Maybe it's harder to conceive or maybe there's less time? It could or? be health, it could be time and, and age as well. So age is uh, something very important. So as people uh, get older, especially the ladies, uh, the women, uh, the chances of uh, uh, getting conceived is uh, more difficult. Then the third leg of your business is aesthetics. So uh, aesthetic, uh, but not just aesthetic, we call it the medical aesthetic. So in this uh, division, uh, we have acquired some uh, very uh, specialized skill set in uh, commercializing a medical aesthetic range of products. So it's medical, so we're dealing with plastic surgeon, skin specialists and uh, aesthetic doctors. We are not dealing with the uh, you know, beauty salon and all that, right? So we offer a range of uh, mini minimally invasive uh, products to uh, provide to this uh, group of uh, doctors to help healthy people like you and me uh, to look and feel better. <laughs> <laughs> to look and feel even better than we do now. Yeah. Um, so how, well business is good because you, you say that even in the Asian financial crisis, yes. um, the demand for product was there. Yes. Nothing has changed. People still want to be healthier. They yes. want to feel better. They want to look good. Yes. Um, how good is business right now? Uh, I think uh, now, 2022, uh, I think this year, the first quarter, uh, we have uh, registered very healthy growth. Uh, in fact, uh, in the first four months of uh, 2022, we have registered uh, uh, the, the highest growth, the all-time high, actually, uh, you know, for the past uh, 20 years. So I think this year is good, uh, up to uh, April. May, I think the first uh, uh, two weeks are still uh, looking good. I hope uh, it's uh, sustainable. So the pandemic must have been quite challenging? Pandemic is uh, challenging, yes, uh, in uh, 2020 and 2021. Uh, challenging in the sense that uh, uh, because of the lockdown and uh, our people, uh, our med rep, uh, they are unable to visit the uh, customers in the hospitals and uh, clinics. And uh, also uh, a lot of the uh, 
medical procedures uh, they have been uh, delayed. Uh, the hospital have also stopped a lot of major uh, operations and all that and uh, all uh, reserve it for COVID uh, cases. Uh, and also uh, during uh, COVID, the school is closed, restaurants are closed, infectious uh, diseases uh, is on the way down. And uh, during COVID as well, uh, people are wearing masks. Uh, the incidence of uh, cough and cold has gone down 30 to 40 percent. Yeah. So uh, in a way, it's uh, affected. But if you look at the, another uh, range of uh, products, right? Uh, the products are indicated for uh, mental health and all that. Uh, it's on the rise as well. And a product for uh, the cardiovascular diseases is also uh, on the rise. So basically, the, the market for healthcare and pharmaceutical business, long term, net net is still very positive, right? Because even though maybe you're getting healthier here, but there's some issues there on, on the mental side, or fertility side, or aesthetic side. Yes. Um, how, so to talk about the landscape, right, Aziming, for the next, say, 20, 30, 40 years, right? For people that want to, or maybe are thinking of going into a pharmaceutical or healthcare business, you know, what, what can you tell them? Uh, I think the uh, healthcare business or the pharmaceutical business is a very uh, interesting industry. Uh, we have been uh, registering uh, annual double-digit growth for many, many years. I think the demand for uh, healthcare services and also product uh, are fueled by uh, you know, the aging population. The population become older from now is more than 7% of the population are above 65 years of age. People are living longer as well. You know, people are living up to 90 to almost uh, touching the hundreds now. So that uh, helped to expand the, uh, uh, the, the market. And uh, I think also partly because uh, the rising of uh, affluence, right? People have uh, more money, you know, lifestyle changes. Uh, you get a different kind of uh, lifestyle uh, diseases as well. And also because of the disposable income, uh, people are willing to pay for better medication. That sustained the growth for many years. I think for many years to come, uh, will still remain uh, the same. And uh, as you know, uh, I always try to compare Malaysian healthcare market size to Taiwan. If you look at these two uh, countries, the population are about the same. But the Taiwanese uh, pharmaceutical or the healthcare market is um, easily four or five times bigger than Malaysia. So I think there are a lot of uh, potential uh, for growth. There's another reason as well. Uh, as you know, uh, Malaysia uh, is aiming to be one of the desired destinations for medical tourists because of, uh, of uh, the high standard of uh, healthcare facilities and also the healthcare prof uh, professionals uh, in this country. So in 2019, there were almost 1 million health tourists came to the country and uh, they spent about uh, almost 2 billion uh, ringgit, in, uh, close to 2 billion ringgit in uh, 2019. So I think with all this uh, in play, I think I believe uh, the healthcare uh, industry will continue to uh, grow. What kind of things keeps you up at night though? Um, what kind of challenges are there? Oh, it can't all be easy going now, right? I think um, uh, what is uh, keeping me awake at night now uh, uh, is uh, the war, the war in uh, Ukraine, not so much of COVID. Oh, uh, the war in Ukraine uh, is uh, affecting the, uh, the logistics. Right, uh, it's very medicine, yeah? the demand and supply is very difficult to predict, and also the schedule of uh, the delivery of uh, goods are from Europe, uh, because um, uh, almost uh, ninety percent of product is coming uh, from uh, Europe. Uh, the unpredictability of the uh, uh, the supply of the product, the war may may affect the uh, supply of the uh, raw material to the manufacturer. Uh, so, and at the same time, the escalation of the uh, freight charges. Uh, give you an example, uh, the air freight uh, charges have increased by 100 to 200 percent compared to uh, pre-COVID. Uh, and also the other challenge is that uh, post-COVID, there's a slight change in the diseases uh, which is uh, available. Yeah. COVID, uh, the mask is uh, protecting the people. Everyone is wearing masks now, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, so uh, chances of getting cough and cold is... Uh, Negligible already. Yeah. Yeah. But there's, there's, there's new stuff coming all the time. This is now this monkeys, monkey... Uh, or something, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, those are still quite, uh, quite new. Quite uh, no? We are still not too sure how will it uh, evolve. But just in terms of managing the business, right, Ziming? Because um, you're still private, so presumably there's only two, you and your wife still in the business. Yes. There's there's benefits of being private, but there's also downsides of being private. Uh, has it been? Has it worked for you the structure? I think it's uh, working well. We have a full control of the business. 
Well, I mean, you look at the result uh, for the past 25 years, uh, we uh, doubled the revenue revenue uh, every five years. Uh, we are still uh, projecting uh, the revenue to, uh, to be doubled uh, every five years for the next uh, 10, 20 years to, to come. I think it's working well for yeah. us. Right? Uh, we don't have to argue on the board on uh, you yeah. know what will be the direction and all that. Shareholders and different strategies and different yeah. motivations. Yeah. I, know, I know you tell you are very interested in leadership and you're constantly training your people to be better leaders and better managers of business. Will that be a structure that works for you long term? I mean in terms of ownership and keeping your staff motivated and things like that. Yes, to keep the staff uh, motivated, uh, we uh, managed to uh, establish a very um, comprehensive performance and management system based on uh, meritocracy. If they do well, the bonus structure is there, the incentive scheme is there. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, you know the bonus paid out and also the incentive paid out is uh, above the market rate, right? Uh, that is uh, for the general uh, staff. As for the uh, key leadership team or the senior leadership team, we have uh, derived a, a long-term incentive plan. Uh, basically, we will share the uh, profit with the key leadership uh, team. As the company perform, uh, they will be getting uh, more in terms of uh, the bonus, of course. And on top of that, there's the long-term, the LTIP, the long-term incentive plan as well. Okay, so it's a very financial um, incentive program in place, yes. right? But equity, you 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 you, think you you never relinquish any part of that mm. for now. Well, I think even if we want to relinquish the uh, equity, you know, how many percent are we willing to relinquish? Right. Right. If the percentage is too small. I think the leadership team may not be interested as well because if you're holding a small percentage of the shares of the company, you're still at the mercy of the major, the major shareholder. Yeah. Right? They would prefer to uh, cash out as uh, soon as possible so that they can decide what to do with the money. So if, if equity becomes part of the equation, would you consider an IPO? IPO then, the shares are quite liquid. They can exit at any time. Yes. I mean, do you think about that at all? Yes, uh, I think uh, for the past uh, two, three years, we have been uh, talking about that. I think if you look at the financial numbers, uh, we, uh, we are okay, we are okay, we qualify. Uh, it's just said that we want to be sure that uh, you know, IPO is the, is the right uh, solution for us uh, to achieve the vision of uh, to be the leading healthcare group in uh, Southeast Asia. So we are still evaluating, uh, in fact... Uh, four countries, right? Currently, we are operating in Malaysia, Singapore and Indonesia, right? Uh, by 2025, uh, we are moving on to uh, Thailand, Vietnam and the uh, Philippines, right? Uh, by then, uh, by 2025, then we may need to re-evaluate. Uh, do we need to get the funding from the public? Uh, or do we have enough of fund from the bank? Or in fact, uh, even uh, consider later on, uh, you know, get the uh, PE to participate to help us in the uh, exit uh, plan. And what is the culture of EP Plus? Uh, we are trying to create uh, a, a very innovative uh, uh, environment, our core value. Uh, so innovative environment, which is uh, informal, also guided by our core value of uh, we want to innovate all the time. Innovating all the time meaning uh, whatever we do, we want to make sure that uh, we can uh, do things better, faster, at a much more cost-effective uh, manner, and uh, also to make it uh, smarter as well. So that is innovating all the time. So uh, upon completing a certain uh, task or role or projects, we always ask ourselves, what's next? How do I improve on it? So that uh, the next round comes and uh, how do we uh, make it a better, faster and also much more uh, cost effective. So we want to innovate all the time. And the second core value of the uh, business is um, we want to conduct ourselves and also the business uh, with uh, integrity. Uh, we put in place our corporate social, uh, corporate integrity system, uh, uh, jointly developed uh, uh, together with uh, uh, Transparency International. That will shape uh, the way we do things in the organization. That is the second core value. Uh, conduct our business and ourselves with uh, integrity. And uh, the third core value is uh, what do we do? We do, don't point fingers. If we don't achieve whatever we supposed to achieve, we don't point fingers. We take personal uh, responsibility in uh, delivering uh, excellence or delivering uh, results. Accountability now? Yeah, okay. accountability, yes. So we've talked about this before. Um, in one generation, people have changed. The children have changed, the young people have changed, mentalities have changed, yes. approaches are different. Yes. How would you advise uh, an entrepreneur today in terms of building a successful business? 
Uh, building a successful business, business uh, I think what is uh, important is that uh, begin with an end in mind. To build a successful business, begin with an end in mind, you must know exactly what you want to achieve. Uh, you must be, have a very clear idea what is your the vision of uh, the business that you are going to build. Where are you heading? Correct? There's a vision. But uh, not, vision alone is still not enough. I think you need to be clear that uh, why do you want to do it? What is the purpose of uh, achieving this vision? So for you, it was a financial purpose, in a way, right? When I first started, it was a financial purpose. Today? Uh, of. <laughs> Today is different. I think uh, it's uh, much more uh, uh, altruistic. Right? Uh, I think the, uh, the uh, core purpose of the uh, company now is uh, we want to uh, innovating for better lives. Let me explain a bit. Uh, innovating for better lives is uh, we want to bring in a very innovative uh, healthcare and uh, pharmaceutical product from Europe to make it accessible to patients in uh, Southeast Asia. And also innovating for better lives also, we are talking about um, you know, helping our people, uh, the young adult within the organization, also within the community. How do we uh, add value to them, helping them to uh, learn and grow and uh, grooming them to become future leaders? So that will be uh, the second part of innovation, innovating uh, how to come up with the uh, the desired uh, new hire integration, training and leadership development framework for the company. Uh, helping this group of people to acquire some life skill so that uh, after acquiring this life skill, they can uh, you know, uh, move on to... No, of course, we want them to stay with us. Right? <laughs> yeah, if they have acquired this life skill, uh, wherever they go, uh, they're going to uh, make use of uh, this skill. And the chances of uh, being promoted will be uh, higher. And the third group of people that uh, we want to innovate for better lives will be, you know, uh, is the, the young adult in the uh, community as, our, uh, as part of our uh, corporate social responsibility uh, initiative. So how do we do that to touch them, the, the young adult in the community? Is after training our people, after our people, the leadership acquired those uh, skill sets, we want them to transfer to the uh, young adult in the community. Okay, and maybe a final word of advice for our Younger businessmen, what should they know? For the uh, younger businessmen, is to stay focused, 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 and not distracted. <laughs> <laughs> okay, on that note, that's fantastic. Thank you, man. Thank you.